Although it is no longer an empire dominating the world, the UK is still an important country with political power and continuing its military operations in many parts of the world. With the Ajax, the British Army has taken an important step to maintain its effectiveness in the new period. But presently, we also began to hear some setbacks about the vehicle. As the weapon detective, we are investigating the Ajax as a symbol of change and its current problems. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. As the fruit of the Scout SV program, the Ajax and its related variants have a different design than the predecessor, the combat vehicle reconnaissance tract, shortly CVRT family. This design change gives us clues about the future threat perceptions of the UK. Different from our previous video, now we will also mention the recent problems of the vehicle. The CVRT family has played an important role in all of the UK's overseas operations since 1971. However, efforts for the replacement of these vehicles were not new. The UK has started working on a new vehicle to replace them in the 1980s. However, due to the changing military needs and financial cuts after the end of the First Cold War, the project was cancelled several times and restarted under different names. After this period of uncertainty, a contract was signed with General Dynamics for the development of the new vehicle in 2010. The Ascot 2 based system was called Scout Special Vehicle or Scout SV. The first pre-production prototype of the vehicle was unveiled in 2015. It was built at General Dynamics facilities in Spain. The same year, the vehicle was named the Ajax. 23 of the 245 Ajax ordered by the British Army will have the artillery forward observation systems and 24 vehicles will be equipped with the ground observation radar. The protected mobility recce support version of the Ajax is called the Ares. This vehicle carries a four-person recon team. The Ares is equipped with only the protector RCWS. Also, there are several other variants. The Athena is the command and control version of the family. The Argus is developed for combat engineer reconnaissance missions. The Apollo is the maintenance variant and the Atlas is the recovery version of the family. Also, General Dynamics UK developed the bridge layer variant of the vehicle. The program will provide new jobs for the British defense industry. Although the vehicle is based on the Ascot vehicle of General Dynamics European Land Systems, the Ajax and its variants will not be produced at the company's facilities in Spain. General Dynamics have founded a new subsidiary, General Dynamics UK, to move the production of the last 489 vehicles to Britain. 80% of the vehicle manufacture will be completed in the UK, with 70% of the supply chain companies will be UK-based. The Ajax is designed to easily adapt to changing combat needs. With a standard combat weight of 38 tons, the vehicle's engine and suspension capacity are suitable for 42 tons of weight. Thus, the Ajax can be equipped with new armor solutions and active protection systems without the need for structural changes. This design will also make it easier for the vehicle to incorporate many new technologies that are currently under development. The three-person crew of the Ajax consists of a commander, gunner and driver. The vehicle has a length of 7.6 meters, a width of 3.33 meters and a height of 2.98 meters. Of course, this height does not include the remote control weapon station. In standard configuration, its combat weight is about 38 tons. But with an additional armor pack, this weight can be increased to 42 tons. The 805 horsepower MTU 8V199TE21 diesel engine provides a maximum speed of 70 km per hour. The road range of the Ajax is 500 km. The vehicle can negotiate 0.75 meter vertical steps and 2.5 meter trenches. The armament of the vehicle consists of one 40 mm cannon and two 7.62 mm machine guns. The hull and the turret of the Ajax are resistant against 14.5 mm ammunition. Thanks to its modular structure, the vehicle can be equipped with additional armor packages to increase ballistic protection. The modular structure also allows for damaged additional armor blocks to be replaced quickly and easily in field conditions. 
to increase survivability, the vehicle is also fitted with laser warning receivers, missile warning sensors and infrared jammers. But currently, the Ajax is not fitted with an active protection system. The Ajax has acoustic detection systems and cameras that increase situational awareness. The landmine protection level of the vehicle has not been officially announced, but it is estimated that the vehicle is resistant against landmines containing explosive equivalent to 8 to 10 kilograms of TNT. The diameter of the turret ring is 1.7 meters. Thus, the commander and the gunner located inside the turret have a larger workspace than the similar types of armored vehicles. The main gun of the Ajax, the CD-40 cannon, fires telescoped ammunition, which is smaller than conventional munitions. Thus, they require smaller space to be stored and the vehicle can carry more ammunition. The turret is controlled electronically. The ballistic computer software can control the use of ammunition. When required, ammunition types can be switched in less than 3 seconds. The rate of fire of the CT-40 is 180 rounds per minute. The turret is stabilized, but during the trials, it was observed that while moving, the excessive vibration level of the Ajax was also damaging electronic systems, including the turret stabilization system. Also, the vehicle could not fire while on the move due to its insufficient suspensions. We should admit that this is a serious problem, especially for a reconnaissance and strike vehicle. The fully stabilized Protector Remote Control Weapon Station, shortly RCWS, can be fitted instead of the Orion primary site. Both the commander and the gunner can watch all views coming from the protector's electro-optics. The high position of the RCWS brings some advantages. First of all, machine gun on the protector helps eliminate potential threats placed near the vehicle, leaving fewer blind spots. Also, thanks to the fully stabilized RCWS, while the gunner tracks a target with the main gun, the commander can simultaneously engage with another target. Yet, the vibration problem is also affecting the electronics and stabilization system of the protector. Depending on the mission definition, the modular protector can be equipped with 12.7mm machine guns or 40mm automatic grenade launchers. This provides flexibility in an operation. The protector's manufacturer, Kongsberg, has also proved that the RCWS can be successfully used against unmanned aerial vehicles in a trial conducted in early 2020. The Ajax is equipped with a state-of-art intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition and reconnaissance shortly ESTAR package with advanced sensors. This advanced ESTAR package allows for automated search, tracking and detection, more than doubling the standoff range at which targets can be identified and tracked. The Orion primary site system was developed by the Thales UK. This site has 360-degree continuous rotation capability with two-axis stabilization so the crew can observe the field on the move. Thanks to the integrated bomb and communication system, the Ajax can share the reconnaissance data in real time with other elements like the Challenger 2 main battle tank and warrior armored vehicles, as well as air units, so an Apache helicopter can engage in detected enemy formation without losing time. Or while they are still in the air, the Heliborn troops can be directed to the right position by using the latest reconnaissance data. The Bowman will be replaced by the more capable next-generation Morpheus Tactical C4 system in near future. Power for all electronic and electro-optic systems comes from a silent auxiliary power generator. So, even while the diesel engine is not running, the Ajax can operate its electronics. According to trial reports, the Ajax has very serious vibration and noise problems. Some reports even claim that the high noise level can cause permanent hearing problems for the crew. To solve this, the crew has to wear noise-canceling headphones. Yet, this was not enough. The trials of the vehicle were halted for 5 months starting in November 2020. It is reported that excessive vibration and noise levels cause nausea, swollen joints and tinnitus. To prevent these, the British Army limited the time for the crew to 105 minutes inside. Also, the speed of the Ajax has been limited to 32 km per hour during the trials. As we mentioned before, the vibration damages the electronic systems. So, in a long-term mission, the Ajax may lose its surveillance capability and weapon stabilization. Also, the suspensions are problematic. They cannot absorb the recoil effect when the vehicle is on the move. These are serious problems. 
To solve them, expensive redesign works have to be done. But no one is sure whether the UK intend to spend money to overcome these problems. The problems may cause the cancellation of the program. Also, we should remember that the vehicle is rather heavy compared to the CVRT it will replace. The CVRT family has carried out important tasks as the quick reaction force of the UK for many years. They could be transported easily and quickly by the C-130 aircraft and the Chinook helicopters. However, currently the Royal Air Force has the C-17 as the only aircraft that can transport a fully loaded Ajax. With its 37 tons load capacity, even the A400M is unable to transport this vehicle with its full combat load. This will result in a significant decrease in the quick reaction capability of the British Army. We can reach several conclusions here. First, the UK no longer plans to intervene in some areas on its own. For quick reaction capability, it plans to take advantage of the transport facilities of the NATO or the USA. Secondly, the Second Cold War is rising and the British Army is preparing itself for a possible conventional conflict. The CVRT family, which was designed in the late 1960s, is now obsolete against today's potential enemy vehicles with heavy weapons and armor protection. Also, the new hybrid warfare concept requires more protected vehicles even against the guerrilla or terrorist groups. The CVRT family does not provide sufficient survivability. However, when we look at the combat experiences, it is seen that these vehicles have not suffered tragic losses. Another criticism about the Ajax is that it doesn't have anti-tank capability. But in a recon mission, destroying some enemy tanks in specific areas has potential which can change the course of the battle. The CT-40 cannon has an effective range of 2,500 meters. And please remember that on a modern battlefield, an anti-tank guided missile is not only an anti-tank weapon, but also a guided artillery round. The British Army learned this lesson in the 1982 Falkland War. As it was seen in the trials conducted in 2016, the Javelin anti-tank missile used by the British Army is still effective at 4,300 meters and a Javelin-equipped Ajax can leave the area unseen immediately after firing this fire-and-forget capable missile in defilade. This would be a precious capability for the vehicle. As a solution to this problem, General Dynamics UK introduced the Ajax Overwatch variant equipped with the Brimstone anti-tank missiles. It is not yet known whether the British Army will order this model. We should add that many countries in Southeast Asia and Africa also plan to replace their CVRT family vehicles. These countries have soft ground. So, the heavy Ajax is not a favored alternative for this potential market. The loss of the UK's traditional market may put the defense industry in a difficult situation in the long term. The Ajax program, which came with high hopes, is now experiencing serious problems. The UK, which invented the tank and gained huge successes with its indigenous vehicles in the international market, now adopts foreign armored vehicles rather than developing them. The fate of the new armor of the crown, the Ajax, will also show us the fate of the future of the British land system design and production capability. The time will tell if it will rise again. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.